bold predictions that you claim you believe in to the point where you would bet your own money on it. This first one, I didn't even know what to make of it. Producer Jesse's back in Nashville. We were talking about this one. Max from Avon, Ohio said, Quinn Ewers has a disaster year and Texas misses the playoff. Well, this is interpretive. So what's a disaster of a year? And I assume you're not meaning injury. I assume you mean he doesn't play well enough. Well, here's the problem with this. If Quinn Ewers is having a disaster of a year, that means they probably lost an early game and he's playing bad early and you know it. If you know it, Sark knows it. And they also know there's a kid named Arch Manning sitting on the bench over there. There's no world where Quinn Ewers is allowed to have a full season that's disastrous, first off. Secondly, the floor is high with him. Like, I don't, I don't know. Again, I don't know what disaster means for you. Maybe he just doesn't have as good a year as he had last year. Okay, that's not a disaster. He had a pretty good year last year. So I think, I think the ceiling's high. I think the floor is very high, too, because you're being developed by one of the best in the game, and they're surrounding you with some of the best players in the game. Like, if you believe the wide receiver transfers won't pan out and that's a disaster, okay, I, I would push back, but okay. But just flat-out Quinn Ewers being disastrous, that's interesting. I put a 9.5 on this. I don't know how we would prove that you got it right. Reasonable minds could agree at the end of the year, but remember, if you predict something and it's a 9.5 or higher on the boldness scale and it hits, chalice of supremacy headed your way. So we'll see about that. Next up. Man, this monitor Gelby gave me is great. Football 101 from Portland, Oregon said two former Pac-12 teams will face off in the Big Ten championship game. Uh, th these are deep waters that you're swimming in. Bold waters. I put a 9.25 on this. So Oregon has the second best odds to win the conference. Clearly, Oregon's got to be half of this. And then I would imagine USC's fifth, Washington's seventh, UCLA 13th. Clearly, you know, the odds would suggest your best shot at this is Oregon versus USC in the conference title game. Okay. Uh, USC does avoid Oregon and Ohio State in the regular season. The, the problem is not with Oregon. Oregon, it's very easy for me to see stylistically navigating their way through the Big Ten and having a spot in the championship game. USC doing that. It's harder to see. It's not impossible. But think about it. You're looking at their schedule. Colin's showing it to you on the screen right now. Let's just say they have it together. Let's say D'Anton Lynn comes across town and defensively they're just a little bit better than people like me maybe even expect them to be. There is not an Ohio State on that regular season schedule. There's not an Oregon on that regular season schedule. And let's say Michigan's just down a little bit more than they hope to be. Penn State goes to the Coliseum. Penn State struggled in some of those bigger games. Uh, those are the humps that they haven't quite gotten over. So maybe, just maybe USC finds a way. It's tough for me to envision because I don't know that they've got the defensive depth to withstand that kind of year. A 9.25 on the boldness scale. What kind of message does that send if it is Oregon versus USC in year one in the Big Ten championship game? Next up, now this is a good one because it's still not on enough radars yet. Matt from Macon, Georgia. Georgia Tech upsets FSU in Dublin. Not Dublin, Georgia. Dublin, Ireland. So this is one of those week zero games. I'm not a huge fan of week zero as a concept, but it is happening. Georgia Tech over FSU. How bold is that to you? It's only an 8.25 for me. The line on this game is FSU minus 12 and a half. Uh, FSU's got a new quarterback. They are 90th or something like that in returning production. Georgia Tech, conversely, coming off one of their best years in quite a while. They're top 10 in offensive returning production. Haynes King is still the quarterback there. Okay, so the quarterback experience edge is on the side of Georgia Tech. You felt something last year with them, and they had close losses too last year. I mean, several of their losses were close. So that may be a program a little bit closer than people are giving them credit for. Good ground game. It's the right time to be playing FSU when they're still peeling the sticker off a lot of these new pieces they got. Not ready to pick the game, but that's only an 8.25 on the boldness scale for me. That's not totally out of the realm of possibility. We had Duke take down Clemson in week one last year, so that was a turnover fest, but those count, so anything could happen. Lastly, this one sounds bold, but it's not all that incredibly bold. Christian from Athens, Georgia said, Neither of the teams in the national championship game will be conference champs. So they're going to be at-large teams. So you get five conference champs in this thing. The other seven are at-large. Mathematically, it works in your favor there. But think about this. I put an 8.25 on this on the boldness scale. 
because you think and you say, oh, wow, but, but Georgia's going to win the SEC, but Ohio State's going to win the Big Ten. Well, in the world where it all works out like it's supposed to, that happens. What if you have an upset in your conference title game? If Georgia, let's just say they're 12-0, and 11-1, and whatever, and they go to the SEC championship game and Ole Miss beats them, Texas beats them, Georgia still goes to the playoff and would still be favored over most any team they played. What if, what if Ohio State beats Oregon and Eugene? Oregon beats Ohio State in the rematch. Ohio State's still in the playoff as an at-large. Like, you could have some shark fins in those at-large waters, or you may have chalk hold, and at, which, at which point it's very difficult to see two at-large teams playing for the title game. Do we get upsets in conference title games? Oh, also, here's another question. Do we have a team that's treading water early that just catches fire late? Too late for them to play for the conference title, but you're, you're looking at that team saying, dude, if they get in this thing, they're going to be a nightmare to deal with. That's the combination you would need. Uh, it's, it's tough, but not impossible to see. So I'll put an 8.25 on that on the boldness scale.